yes, we we are. We would ask that you wait until the end of the presentation. Stay on board with us because we're going to be having an exciting offer to talk about, and uh, we're going to be announcing that at the end. And it will be available to all new prospective partners for Acumatica. So stay tuned for that. And uh, we will be announcing that shortly at the end of the presentation. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Noelle. And uh, she's got Mike Oswalt with us, President and CEO of Algorithm. And so, Noelle, thank you so much. Thank you, Adrienne. And hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. And today we will be, as Adrienne mentioned, uh, being joined by Mike Oswalt. He's the CEO of Algorithm. And there's his happy and smiley face there. And we wanted to just say that um, we're going to do a, what we say, an interview, but it's more or less of conversation. So um, what we'd like to do right now is actually give a little overview of Algorithm, who is one of our premier Acumatica partners. And as you can see, they are actually celebrating their 25th year anniversary, so congratulations. They started in 1993 as a certified full-service Macola software channel partner. And today, Algorithm is the largest Macola business partner in the country. They are gold certified partner of Acumatica since uh, last year. Um, their core process, the analysis of businesses to discover and document their critical business object objectives. From that, they make informed recommendations on business solutions and software that will streamline operations and improve visibility. Team of business experts that hold numerous degrees and certifications, as you can see, and they specialize um, in manufacturing, warehouse management, e-commerce, networks, services, and much more. And to the right of the slide, you'll see all the recent awards that they received. So I'll let you look at that for a few seconds before we begin our discussion. Okay, Mike, are you ready? I am, Noel. Nice to hear from you. Nice for you to join us today. So how if you tell the audience, how did you first discover Acumatica and what exactly convinced you to become a new partner? Uh, well, thanks for the chance to talk about that. We, um, I had been a McCullough customer for uh, three or four years and uh, one day decided that I could do this whole reseller thing and uh, went uh, out and um, signed up with McCullough and spent 25 years um, implementing and, and selling and growing an organization. Uh, and the primary driver in that was the partnership that McCullough uh, went to market with. It was a pure partner program. And then over a couple of acquisitions, that started to, to fade, and uh, they started to come in with a no rules, no holds barred, blended model that created nothing but conflict. So uh, in, in late 2016, I went out and started a search for a product that I felt could take us another 25 years or more and uh, went through uh, several products, looked at all of them, all the normal suspects. And uh, what, what was first on my plate was the partnership model. Uh, we, we needed a product uh, and a company that we felt we could partner with, that we could uh, grow with, that understood our business and, and uh, trusted us to go to market with their product. So the, the partnership program was first and foremost in our evaluation. Uh, secondly, we needed a cloud product. We felt like we stayed on the sidelines for a couple of years and that it was the right time. So not only did we want a good solid product, but it had to be a cloud-based product. And it had to have a good development and ISV world. Um, we've got a good development group. We want to make sure that a product that we picked up wasn't just a, a product that you slam in and, and uh, take it or leave it kind of a situation. So we want to make sure the development program uh, or product uh, platform was solid and that it had a good, strong ISV world. The McCullough world has um, maybe five or six decent ISVs, and that just wasn't enough in uh, most cases. So we uh, we did our due diligence and uh, settled on Acumatica, the one we really wanted to go deeper with. Uh, I had known Don Yeager from a previous life, so I hooked up with Don, and, and you can't help but get uh, some of Don's infectious laughter and her uh, attitude. So she uh, she brought us to the point where we agreed to go to Summit in January of 17 uh, to see what this whole Acumatica world was about. 
And uh, I think we were three minutes into uh, John Roskill's uh, keynote when I said, we got to sign up with these people. So we signed up in uh, at Summit 2017, which was in San Diego, I think. Yes, it was. And thank you for that. And just expounding on that um, for the next question, what sets Acumatica's partner program apart from any other competitive software publishers out there? Well, first, of pri primarily, I'm, I'm pretty sure Acumatica is not uh, taking action to terminate their entire reseller community. Uh, that's been our experience lately with the McCola uh, world. Uh, McCola has decided that they don't uh, want to go to market through a reseller community any longer, and they've taken action to uh, terminate their resellers. So it definitely differentiates itself from that, I'm sure. Um, we found in um, the partner program that uh, not only did they promise to do certain things, but those promises were easily fulfilled, like training, certification, um, you know, a way to get launched before we had all of our skills in place through a uh, kind of an implementation assist with Todd, Todd's group and a demo assist with uh, Tom Costa and his group. So we want to make sure that we could hit the ground running uh, with with those resources, but also uh, that had the, the uh, ability to get up to speed and get certified ourselves quickly. And everything that we wanted in a partner program was promised to us, was available, was delivered to us as we were ready for it. Good, thank you. So you kind of blended in the uh, answers to questions number two and three, so thank you for that. <coughs> because the onboarding process, as you know, is we feel is quite unique um, from recruitment to enablement, which we'll, uh, my colleague Kent will talk about. Um, it's, we want to make sure that we arm our partners to be successful with all the resources that they need to get out there to sell and implement. So thank you for that. So um, let's jump to number four. During the first 90 days of your company's onboarding, what was your go-to-market strategy? And then as you can see, we have some additional questions after that. Well, first of all, what was important to us um, was that we had a manufacturing product. Uh, that's been the basis of our entire existence was in the manufacturing market. We want to make sure there's a manufacturing product. Uh, at the time, uh, that was an ISV. That's changed now to make, being Acumatica's product, which thrills us. It was a surprise to us. Uh, we're in Columbus, Ohio, and uh, that actually the manufacturing guys are here in Columbus. We got to get know them very well and uh, talk to them about what the market looked like and how we would go to market with their product. Um, so uh, they and the Acumatica team were very supportive. The other thing uh, in from day one, uh, which I had up under question three, but I'll throw it into question four that I left out in our um, onboarding is uh, our, what Acumatica calls PAM, partner assistant, something. Uh, I call her cheerleader, um, Sarah Kirby. Partner account manager. Yeah, yeah account <laughs> manager, right. Sarah Kirby is amazing. Uh, you, you almost don't want to disappoint her. I mean, she's so terrific, brings a lot of resources. If we need something, uh, if I need something really quick, I'll Skype it to her or I'll call her and she just delivers and she's there for us every step of the way and pointing out, you know, you, you guys should look at this or want to get in this certification or this area. Let me get you some resources. And she's done that very well. Um, our first 90 days. Um, well, I think I'm in the question five, but we closed our first deal in the first 90 days. So uh, that was that was pretty exciting for us. Absolutely, and and thank you for that. Um, could you kind of expound a little bit more about that win? Like, uh, what type of customer was it? Uh, the assistance that you did receive to helping close that deal? Yeah, so we got a lot. Like I said, we we needed that that launch um, uh, initially to get us up to speed because we needed to be quick, and everybody was helpful. I don't even remember who did the demo for us, but uh, that was a, 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 a conversion van customization company that needed some very specific uh, requirements in the software, which we were able to attain and deliver. Um, and, and that one was fun. That wasn't the one I was going to bring up under my most successful one, though, if I could go, you want to go to number six? Yeah, please do. So we, we uh, uh, this one's relatively new, actually, uh, just recently, but there's a, a national organization, I won't get into what they do, but it's a national organization was an orphaned uh, Acumatica account out of some other state who had relocated to 
near near us and had asked for a local partner. Well, they were three minutes from our house, my home. So Sarah referred them to us, and we became uh, their partner, and, and that's been a really good uh, arrangement. And then they have uh, nine uh, cooperative owners, regional cooperative owners around the country, that, and then a number of them over in Europe and New Zealand and Australia, and we just closed our first of those nine. We have a verbal commitment. We're waiting for the kickoff meeting. Um, the first of those nine, ultimately, we think we're going to sign up all nine of those and the ones in Europe and the ones in uh, New Zealand and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the, uh, the rest, well, the rest of the organization. So we're pretty excited about it. And, and uh, it started out really kind of a small company, one to relocate that's going to turn into something really, really large for us. And um, Sarah's been there for that. And uh, Acumax has been very uh, supportive. Great, and congratulations, and early congratulations, I should say. Yeah, thanks. So thank you for that. So as you know, we have our upcoming annual partner summit. This year will be in Houston, Texas, uh, in January 2019. So could you please provide to the audience some key takeaways of every time, you, well, you, this will be your second, I guess, right? Or, uh, third. 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 Yeah. yeah, third partner summit. So talk about some of the key takeaways that you you uh, will experience. Yeah. Um, well, I, I mentioned in uh, the first your first question about what got us excited. I mentioned that we weren't very far into Roskill's, uh, John Roskill's keynote. One of the things he said that day was, uh, we, we don't need a big uh, sales engine because we've got you, our resellers. And so we're going to put X percent, I forget if you said 70% or whatever, some large percentage of of our revenue into product development. Well, that was news to my ears on both both parts. First of all, they're not going to come in with a direct organization like our current experience is with, another, with the other products with Nicole. And um, they're going to invest in the product so the product's going to continue to make uh, movements uh, and, and improvements. And so both of those were very strong for us. Um, I, I go probably, if, if for no other reason, just to listen to Ron, uh, John Roskill's opening uh, keynote. The guy's infectious and uh, loves what he does, and I enjoy listening to him talk and gets me fired up. Uh, we usually take a lot of people. We'll, we'll probably take 10 to 15 of our staff there this year uh, just so I can expose them to John's keynote, if nothing else. The ISV um, uh, third-party products, it, there's there's too much to consume by uh, one or two people. So that's another reason I take a good team. There are so many, and instead of having one option or no options, which has been my experience uh, in the McCall world, uh, you've got four or five, and each of them have their own little niches. You know, you've got four or five day, ways to do WMS, and each has their niche, each has their strength. You want to get to know them. You want because ultimately you're going to refer them to customers. You want to know them, and uh, you, you would not have a better opportunity to find them all in one place than at Summit. The problem is that there's so many of them that you better have a few people with you to take notes or you'll never get through them all. Or if that's the case, be sure to be really focused on the ones you think are important in your business. Um, there's, a, there's a normal reconnect with peers across the country and friends. Uh, the McCola channel now, I think there's seven or eight of us now that have joined Acumatica, so these are people I've known for 25 years. I look forward to seeing them, and uh, we're going on this journey together, so that's been really exciting. One thing that is done really well, and I didn't know how you would make it work, but it's worked really well, is you combine customers and resellers. So my experience is there's a customer conference and there's a reseller conference, uh, but you do a great job of mixing those together, and everybody's got their own breakout sessions, and common sessions where it makes sense, breakouts where it, where it makes sense to break those out. So that's a really good thing. Uh, we've made real use of the training that's offered at Summit. So can't we wouldn't have reached goal as fast as we had if we didn't take advantage of training in that first summit. And this year is special to me because my folks live in Houston. And so it'll give me a reason to see it. <laughs> that, that will make them happy. That'd be great. It would be good to spend ample time with them. Mike, thank you so much for that. And just to summarize this whole interview segment of the uh, webinar, could you just say what's, what's the w number one reason why a partner prospect would, should consider Acumatica? What would you say would be the number one? 
That's going to be a tough one. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to limit it to one. I'm going to say management's vision on how to deliver a product-centric reseller channel. Oh, nice. I like that. <laughs> Unrehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate your time and your sharing of your uh, experience with us and you have been a stellar partner for us and we look forward to you know many more customer wins from you and um and we'll be here to, again and always to support you so at this time i'd like to um transfer this presentation over to my esteemed colleague kent richardson who is part of the acumatica enablement team take it away kent thank you noel and, and thank you mike very much i think um it's important for us to lead with the voice of, of our partner community and Mike for you to represent that today is, is greatly appreciated and I'm sure everybody was was hanging on every word. A um, couple of corrections to the record I'd like to make today. Uh, early on I was introduced as uh, Vice President of Product and Technology and um, amongst all my friends on the call here today and with, with my peers that is such a stretch for me. Uh, <laughs> so we need to make sure we correct that slide for the future because uh, anybody that hears this recording or sees that slide is going to question that and we need to be all about integrity and, and, and consistency with Acumatica. Uh, the second thing is, is that I do work for the Acumatica enablement team and we're going to do a couple of things today. Uh, we're going to talk about the Acumatica enablement objective, kind of our mission statement. And about a year ago, uh, this goes back to what Mike was saying. Um, the Acumatica executive team uh, came together and said, how can we help our partners become comfortable, confident, and competent representing Acumatica so they can get a faster return on their investment? Now, when I say return on investment, I think if you've been looking at the Acumatica partner program, you know that we do not charge uh, organizations to be uh, an Acumatica partner. There's no fee associated with becoming an Acumatica partner. However, we do recognize that you're going to invest your time, your talent, and, and some treasure to build an Acumatica practice. And it's our responsibility on the enablement team to make sure you get a return on that investment as quickly as possible. And we're specifically focused on helping you sell the product, demonstrate the product, market the product, and then deploy the product uh, from an implementation standpoint. So that's the mission statement, uh, as it were, of the Acumatica enablement team. And, and much like Mike said just a couple of minutes ago, I give John Roskell and, and, and the executive and the leadership team a lot of credit for recognizing that we can do a better job of enabling our partners, and hence the Acumatica enablement team was created and was deployed in support of our partners. We have a great partner account management team in the field. Mike referenced uh, Sarah a little bit earlier, but Sean Chatterjee and his team across the country do a great job, but they're really a customer facing, uh, prospect facing, in the trenches, in the field, sales support vehicle for you. And the enablement team is really uh, navigate the ecosystem, learn about Acumatica, how to get certified, ramped up and on board as quickly as possible. So in a, in a, in a long rambling, uh, soliloquy, that is our mission statement, and that's what we're here to do for all of our partners. Uh, and to do that, uh, we have a team. Uh, Jeff Ashley, uh, who I hope uh, some of you have met in your technology career. Uh, Jeff has been in the channel community uh, for 30 plus years. He has started channels. He's run channels. He has been a partner. He's walked a mile in your shoes. Uh, I work for Jeff. Uh, I support the enablement team and the folks that, that follow behind me. Uh, specifically, I focus in on, on the sales enablement and the ecosystem enablement piece. Uh, I, too, was a partner. I started as a Microsoft partner. Uh, I've run channels, worked in channels, and, and really greatly appreciate Acumatica's commitment to the channel. Uh, below that, and I think, um, you know, Mike referenced just a little bit ago, we recognize that, you know, early on, as you come on board as a partner, being able to demonstrate the product out of the gate is something that you're going to need help with. So I have a team of dedicated pre-sales resources uh, headed up by Eric Moreau, Tom Costa, Jessica Gadboyce that are available to support qualified opportunities. And I think this is a big change for us in that uh, we require that our partners 
bring to us if they need demo support, they have to bring to us a qualified opportunity. In other words, we have to know what we're going to be demonstrating because Eric, who's going to take that first call, is then going to triage the opportunity, go through a discovery document, and make sure you get to the right pre-sales resource to demonstrate the right solution for your, for your prospect early on until you can be certified and come up to speed and do the product demonstrations on your own. Mike also mentioned that we recognize that in the in the beginning, that from an implementation standpoint or from a deployment standpoint, uh, there needs to be some support infrastructure and support network. And Todd Coons and his team uh, have developed what we call the Partner Implementation Assist Program. And think of us as your, you know, your shadow, your coach, your mentor, there to be in support of you as you begin to implement and deploy your first couple of deals so that you are successful and getting that positive return and that recurring revenue and renewal that we all need in this subscription model. And then we've got uh, Donna Krizik, uh, who works in our partner uh, marketing uh, organization, and Donna's there to help you chip away at building a marketing plan, engaging with Acumatica Marketing, uh, how best to utilize the, the campaign factories that we have, the campaign in a box, the events that we attend, the, you know, the, uh, the content that we generate. I strongly encourage everyone on the phone today that if you don't have a Twitter account, uh, you need to generate a Twitter account and you need to go out there and you need to start following Acumatica. Um, it's okay if you never tweet something, but I'll tell you, Kathy and Connie and Donna and the marketing team does a great job of putting tremendous content out there on what Acumatica is doing. And that's content that you can leverage in your practice. So like I said, uh, we have a couple of focused areas that the enablement team uh, wants to make sure all of our partners are comfortable, competent, and confident about, certainly from a sales perspective. And we're going to talk a little bit about our corporate presentation today. What makes Acumatica unique? Why should partners, why should customers be interested in Acumatica? How do I sell this? Uh, and then once we enable you on how to deliver that message to the marketplace, then you've got your partner account manager, be it Sarah, be it Karen, be it Dinesh, be it Roman, uh, you know, be it Sean Chatterjee, our VP of sales, or Jean Cummings, any of our, our field-based sales organization to help you sit at the table with your prospects so that you guys are successful. We already talked about the pre-sales support, uh, we already talked about marketing support, and we already talked about implementation support. Again, these are the areas that we focus in on from an enablement perspective. You know, in the first 90 days, uh, and I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit, Mike, so if you could, you know, uh, preface yourself and get off mute. These are some of the areas that we really, that we really focus in on. And, and one of the things that we focus in on is our Acumatica partner portal. And, you know, Mike, I hear regularly from new partners and from existing partners that the, the depth and breadth of information that we have in our Acumatica partner portal goes far beyond anything anybody has ever experienced. Is, is that a consistent observation from algorithm standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. I, I would say everything you need is there. Uh, one of the things that we did early on, because we've got a, a number of people with a number of disciplines and uh, Acumac is a broad product. Uh, we went on the portal and one of the things I really liked was the, uh, the paths, the various paths to certification. So, if you wanted to be uh, certified in this area, you had to go through this path and earn these four or five badges. And if you want to be certified in sales, you had to have these badges. And so there was there was a very nice graphical uh, presentation of what we had to do to attain the certifications we wanted to attain to get the level we wanted to get. We downloaded that uh, off of the um, portal. I took that to a printer and we had four by eight posters made of that pathway. We put them all over the office, so you couldn't get away from what my expectations were of the um, of the training steps that everybody had to go through. And right there in front of them were the badges and the pathways that they had to go onto the portal and sign up for and get through certification. And uh, we we moved through that uh, just at a blistering pace because of the, the resources that were there. Yeah, and for those of you that didn't notice uh, early on during Mike's 
uh, introduction uh, where we had his, his picture, and he is what we call an, Ac an Acumatica certified gold partner, which is the highest level of certification you can achieve. And Algorithm was one of the very first organizations, one of the quickest organizations to get to gold set certification. And they did that through the Acumatica partner portal, attending the training sessions at Summit, uh, attending some workshops that we do throughout the year to accelerate their certification and knowledge uh, with Acumatica. Every bulleted point here, and I'm not going to go through them all, uh, are recorded webinars uh, that take our partners through how to leverage and utilize the partner portal to its, mo to its maximum effect, H how to deliver the corporate presentation, and really what you know these key elements that we're getting ready to introduce from an Acumatica standpoint, why they resonate in the marketplace, and why they're so powerful. Uh, everything from pricing uh, to ideas on how to build my pipeline even quicker. Uh, we walk through the implementation assist program. We even have a really exciting, it's, it's right now it's been one of our most viewed uh, Acumatica webinars, which is welcome to the 21st century. And this is the challenges and opportunities that the 21st century VAR is facing. Um, you know, the, the classic definition of the value added reseller is changing in the software as a service and subscription world. So your definition of value and lifetime value to your prospects has to change along with it. And this has a, a, been a very popular uh, workshop and a very popular uh, webinar that, that the partners have really invested in. So again, that's kind of the enablement journey. Uh, and for those of you that are thinking about uh, becoming an Acumatica partner and, and you've been talking to Noel or, or you've had a chance to go through uh, a conversation with me, uh, let's just say that your first 90 days, the voice you're hearing right now is a voice that's going to be in your ear pretty consistently for your first 90 days to make sure uh, we're living up to your expectations and we're helping you get a positive return on investment as quickly as possible. I'm going to shift gears right now and kind of go into the Acumatica corporate presentation. And the reason I'm going to go through this, and I'm going to go through this as, as I would be communicating uh, to a prospective partner, and I'm going to hit the highlights uh, that I think resonate just not just with partners, but also with prospects. So here we go. So as I build out these slides, I'm going to go from the inside out. Uh, and this first element or this introduction to Acumatica, we talk about being born in the cloud. And yeah, you can read out to the left-hand side there, it says that we made some big bets on some technology fundamentals such as HTML5 and web services. But really what born in the cloud means is that we have a single line of code. It was built for the cloud. Everything we do has been designed for the cloud. So there is no migration. Uh, for those of you that are they're carrying other products from other publishers, you know that they're trying to re-architect and rewrite and redeploy a large segment of their portfolio into the cloud. There's no guarantee for you. There's no guarantee for your prospects and your customers what level of functionality, what ISV integration, what, what is actually going to make it to the cloud. And that's a risk. So being born in the cloud from an Acumatica perspective, I think we can all agree that uh, along with Gartner and IDC and Forrester that at some point in time, the, the vast majority of software is going to be delivered via the cloud. Uh, we are a risk mitigator when it comes to partners that want products that are going to be in the cloud and customers that want to purchase products that are going to be in the cloud. The second thing we talk about is that we're business application experts. Yes, you know, the, the trendy phrase is we have ERP in our DNA, but really what it means is, is that the, the founders of Acumatica were actually mid-market ERP experts. In other words, a lot of people don't know that, you know, that one of the founders of Solomon Software, for those of you that are familiar with that, uh, is actually one of the co-founders of Acumatica. So we bring this business application experts. I know Mike mentioned early on that we're a technology company, and John Roskill, our CEO, mentions all the time that Acumatica is a technology uh, company. And, and I think John means a couple of things by that. Um, which we'll talk about here on, on, on the last piece I build out. But I want every partner on the line here to be very comfortable with the fact that we know how to process journal transactions in the general ledger. Uh, we know how to process uh, order to cash. We know how to manage your inventory. We understand the business application and business processes that companies need. 
And, and when I say mid-sized customers, it's really interesting in today's marketplace. You know, mid-size isn't necessarily defined by employee size or revenue size. It's really defined by business process complexity because we have, you know, very, very large organizations. We have customers that are, you know, billion dollar companies that run Acumatica because we fit their business processes. And yet there are, you know, $5 million companies that we can't pursue because they have a business process complexity that for whatever reason doesn't fit into the Acumatica portfolio of products. The, the, the third part of the, the puzzle here is this current cloud disruption. And what we mean by that is that I'm sure we've all seen it. Mike mentioned it earlier that, you know, they were looking for a cloud solution. Well, you know, the cloud's been around for a while. It started in CRM. It started in human capital management. You know, it started in, you know, office, you know productivity products, you know, like Office 365. And now it's really starting to gain momentum in that ERP application or the, the central nervous systems of your organization. But the trick is, is that I now have to participate in a multi-cloud world. And we'll talk about there that in, in some of the key differentiators with Acumatica is that if these companies that have invested in a Salesforce or a ServiceNow or DocuSign or, or, some, or a, a broad range of cloud applications, their cloud ERP has to be able to connect and participate in that multi-cloud world. And we're a leader of that cloud disruption, which is what we can do. The last thing I wanted to talk about here is probably what I hope is most important to the prospective partners here on the call is this concept of a 100% partner channel. And we are, um, you know, there's no hidden agenda here. Um, you know, Mike is, uh, if you've gone through the partner program evaluation, uh, you've seen that there are some requirements Acumatica has uh, to have certain badged or certifi certifi certified elements within your organization. Uh, there's a practice owner and executive role. There's a sales executive role. There's a pre-sales engineer role. And then there's a business consultant or slash implementation resource role. So those four roles have to be filled by three independent individuals. And uh, Mike has, has gone through the practice owner and executive uh, workshop and was actually part of a very exciting meeting we had in Denver this year um, where John Roskell, our CEO, said a couple of very interesting things. The first interesting thing he said, and he reminded everybody that Acumatica is a technology company. And what John means by that is that over 74% of Acumatica employees are focused on the research and development and quality of the Acumatica product. That's what we do. We build one product, one code base for one sales organization that happens to be the channel. And from a customer perspective, that's the best of both worlds. Acumatica is exclusively focused on building out the platform, the product, and the technology, and our channel is exclusively focused on selling it. That's a, that's a great place to be in. And Mike, if you'll back me up on this, the, the real exciting thing I think that, that John Roskell uh, announced to the assembled owners, and there were 50 of them in the room, was you know, somebody asked John, what's our plan B? What's Acumatica's plan B if the channel uh, doesn't work out? And, and Mike, what did John say? I think you said there is no plan B. There is no plan B. <laughs> I appreciate you playing along with me, Mike. We did not practice this in advance. But, no. um, it was music. You know, say again, Mike. It was music to my ears. There is no plan B. We are channel-centric, channel-focused, however you want to describe it. We are completely committed to going to market through our partners. Now, that means we're raising the bar on our partners. We can't just accept anybody and everybody that wants to be a partner. You know, we have to make sure that they're going to be committed to the Acumatica practice development, that they've got the right background, they've got the right resources, because everybody that becomes an Acumatica partner wants that. Okay, we have to protect the brand. We have to protect your investment to make sure that everybody comes on board is comfortable, competent, and confident representing the Acumatica solution. So let's get through that and let's talk about some of the analyst recognition that we've got out there. But the one I wanna draw your attention to is in, in the bottom right-hand corner. Everybody goes right to Gartner, which is in the middle there, but I wanna to go to uh, the Nucleus Research piece. And I would encourage all of you to either get on Twitter or go to, go to the Google and, and, and Google the Quick Nucleus Research ERP technology and value matrix where Acumatic was rated highest for usability and industry leadership by customers. 
Okay. And I think that's, you know, it's, it's all well and good for Kent to be, you know, <laughs> genuinely enthusiastic about what Acumatica does. And we had our all hands meeting today where John shared with us where we're going and how things are going. So, you know, I'm even more excited and enthused about Acumatica than I am every other day uh, because we had some great news to share today. But this is coming from our customers. OK, and that's the voice that we want to hear from. Yeah, it's great that Gartner and IDC and Forrester and the analysts think highly of us. But when our customers give us rave reviews, then we know we're definitely on the right track. The other thing I like to bring your attention to is, you know, I know Mike mentioned that we're a, a manufacturer solution as well. Uh, but this year we were the 2018 Cody Award winner, not just for the best cloud ERP solution, but they had a separate standalone category this year for the best manufacturing solution. So, again, if you're if you're in an ERP play and you've got manufacturing or distribution in your background or in your DNA, uh, you can't really do much better than Acumatica from a cloud solution. I know a lot of you are looking at the PC Magazine Editor's Choice Award, and if you haven't heard it before, you're focused in on that unusual pricing model. We're going to talk about that here in about three slides, guys. I'm going to quickly go through this slide. The only reason I bring this slide up quite candidly is from a global force perspective, is I think it's important for everybody to know, despite the FUD that's in the marketplace, our corporate headquarters is in Seattle, Washington. We're a North American-based company, and we do have support organizations from engineering, support, and development around the globe. But our CEO, our CFO, you know, our organization, and our corporate headquarters is in Seattle, Washington. So let's roll into some of the key differentiators, and there's four of them I'd like to bring your attention to today. Now, it should come as no surprise as a cloud-based or browser-based application that Acumatica provides access from anywhere, anytime, on any device. I, I want to go a little bit beyond that and say, yeah, you know, there's great stories we have about there about our customers being able to, to put their people on an airplane and fly them out of harm's way and get them to the Internet and then run their business without having to worry about the physical infrastructure that happens to be in the way of the hurricane. You know, there's some great, really some really great, cool stuff about the fact that the Acumatica product, you know, dynamically sizes, you know, from your from your mobile phone, your smartphone to your tablet, to your laptop, to your desktop. That's all representative of the investment and the technology that Acumatica has made in the in the product line. But what I like most about this is, for example, let's use the story around a dashboard, okay? Everybody and their brother shows expense management uh, as, as the one where I can take a picture of the receipt uh, and then I can attach that to a uh, you know, to an expense re report as a mobile device. But we think it's more important that that information is able to be shared across the entirety of the company. So let's let's think about that prospect that we know that's thinking about, you know, buying a user license for a CEO to have a dashboard to have a report. Well, with a click, with literally a click of a button, you can move an application such as a dashboard from your desktop to your mobile device by enabling it as mobile. And it, it, it's as, Mike, it's as simple as clicking that box on the screen that says, I want to push this out to a mobile device. And it, it's just so powerful. Would you support me on that, Mike? Yep, I'm sorry I talked over. Yes, I agree, absolutely. No, and that's, that is true anytime, anywhere, any device. There's no recoding. There's no separate platform. It's, it's as simple as putting a check mark in a box in the dashboard, in the application, in the screen that you want to go to mobile, and it goes to mobile. We talked a little bit about this earlier, enabling the connected cloud. For those of us that have been in the industry a long time, we used to make a lot of money, you know, creating our integration points, you know, between our ERP system and our third party products or our legacy systems. The good old ODBC days where we generated a lot of money as a systems integrator or as a value added reseller. You know, Acumatica is of the opinion that this needs to be as close to a plug and play world as we can get. So the open architecture, the, the, the APIs and the technology platform we have allows for, I'm not going to say instantaneous connectivity because we got to test it, we got to make sure it works. But for those of you that want to take a quick look at it, 
do the Google again and go out and look at Doug Johnson's Salesforce uh, video on how Acumatica connects to Salesforce. Or go out and look at the CTO of Amazon and how he does his demonstration of how Amazon Alexa connects to Acumatica. And of course, it goes without saying that we do some productivity products such as uh, Office 365, Smartsheet, DocuSign, uh, Power BI, Box, uh, just a, a whole wealth of products that we enable and empower that connected cloud. Okay, Kent, those are two things that a lot of people will talk to, and there may be some unique differentiators for Acumatica, but we're looking for some more meat on the bone here. So let's talk about Acumatica's flexible deployment model. Now, what this means is that at working from left to right, if you choose to deploy in the public cloud or our software as a service solution, that resides on Amazon infrastructure. Now, let's be very clear. This is the Acumatica cloud within Amazon Web Services. So the engineers and the support organization is absolutely Acumatica talent, not Amazon talent. But that's the Acumatica software as a service public cloud solution. Then we've got, uh, if you skip over the, the licensed on-premise, if the customer says, you know, I really think I need to run it on-premise, we can absolutely do that. Now, this is unique amongst cloud providers that we will allow people to, to license the product traditionally on-premise. It is less than 6% of our business today, uh, but it is something that we do offer if there happens to be a unique requirement. The other flexible deployment option we'd like to talk about is we do allow uh, hosted in a private cloud, okay, or a data center. So private cloud subscription, public cloud subscription, and on-premise. And what we mean by that is if, if you've got a customer that says, look, I've got a, a, a relationship with a local managed services provider, and I would like to put my Acumatica license in my local cloud provider, we allow for that. Or if they want to go with Google, Azure, or somebody else, we allow for that. There are flexible deployment options for you as a partner and for your customers. Now, there's a lot of value in the public cloud for all the reasons that we know. Multi-zone multi disaster recovery, uh, security and compliance, uh, all the things that, that help customers be more comfortable with having their applications reside in the cloud, and it comes in a single subscription price from Acumatica. So cloud on your terms, delivered as you need it. Last thing I'd like to talk about is what was alluded to a little bit earlier on in the PC Magazine, unusual pricing model. We don't think it's unusual at all. We think it's really industry leading and it's in, of great benefit to Acumatica customers. The, the traditional software licensing model is you pick the modules that you need or the functionality that you need and you pay a fee for that. And then you pay an additional fee for each and every user that you want to have access to the functionality that you've purchased. Acumatica feels that the entirety, of the, the entirety of the organization should benefit from the investment that the company is making in Acumatica. So to that end, the Acumatica pricing consists of two elements. First, the customer will purchase or license the functionality that they need, be it general ledger, accounts payable, accounts receivable, inventory management, manufacturing, wh whatever that functionality is, they will need. And then we will take a measurement based on the company's size as it relates to certain commercial transaction volumes or the infrastructure that they need to run that functionality. We will combine the functionality they need with the infrastructure resources that we will need to deploy on their, on their behalf, and that becomes their price from Acumatica through our partners. I think it's very important to note here that all of the pricing is handled through our partners. Acumatica never talks to a, a, a customer. We don't collect payment from the customer. All of that flows through the partner. The customer pays the partner, the partner pays Acumatica. You guys maintain the relationship with the customer. Why do we believe that the consumption-based pricing and, and having everybody within the organization is important? Is because it removes business bottlenecks and it improves results. For example, if I'm a distributor and I sell my solution through partners and I want to have my partners have the ability to access the system to see the status of orders or the status of invoices, or I want my customers to be able to look into the system and see a status of an order, a status of an invoice, 
as long as the portal functionality has been invested in, those users that, that ping into the Acumatica system, as many as you want to have is as many as you can have, and we don't ding you or charge you for each and every user there. Now, that's great for the company. What, what can I do with my customer service team? What kind of relationship can I build with my customers and my partners now when I provide that level of quality self-service that I hadn't been able to afford in the past? Same thing with how many people in your accounting department? Well, I've got 15. How many do you want to have on the system? I can only afford five. Well, in the Acumatica environment, you, all 15 can be on there. Now it's all based on role and responsibility and security, which we can do for each and every user. So again, it's the infrastructure that we need to, to deploy on their behalf and the functionality they need to run their business. If the company is a two bedroom apartment size company, they pay a two bedroom apartment size. If they're a 5,000 or 10,000 square foot house organization, then they pay a different price. Those prices are locked for the, the term of the agreement and we measure and make sure their consumption you know, falls within their agreed upon terms. We don't change it every month and we don't cut them off and we give them room to grow. If they're a seasonable, seasonal company, we allow organization to purchase 90 day blocks of peak uh, you know, infrastructure requirements. So if I'm a agriculture business or I'm an e-tailer and I've got 90 days of predicted, you know, spike, I can purchase that 90 day volume and then I can go back to my traditional volume. It's a longer conversation, but uh, one we're always willing to have with prospective partners as well as customers. Let's talk a little bit about Acumatica's uh, global customers, uh, ISVs and our customer community. This is this. I show this slide from a global customer perspective to let you know that there are exceptionally large organizations out there. Uh, I'll draw your attention to MYOB out of Australia uh, and Visma uh, out of the Nordics. These are incredibly large organizations that struggled quite candidly with how are they going to take their products to the cloud? Since their products weren't built in the cloud, how are they going to get there? Well, these organizations conducted worldwide searches and the technology platform they chose to use to get their products to the cloud was the Acumatica platform. That's the purpose of showing the slide is that our technology, our platform and our solution set is standing up against all of the technology platforms in the world and engaging in tremendous relationships with very, very large global companies. Yikes. What is this slide? Well, this goes back to what Mike was talking about a little bit earlier on. Because we are the, the fastest growing cloud-based ERP solution in the marketplace, and because so many organizations are moving to the cloud, it should come as no surprise that there's a bit of a land grab going on or a gold rush going on of people wanting to come work with Acumatica. So this is just a sample representation of the third party products or ISVs that we have that work with Acumatica. And we have a, an incredibly talented ISV team and we have a whole family of what we call Acumatica certified ISV products and then Acumatica customer certified ISV products. So you can go through, if you go out to the Acumatica website and, and you look at our extensions, you'll see uh, Fusion Warehouse Management System is Acumatica certified and Acumatica customer certified. That means those, those are two good housekeeping seals of approval, as it were, for the Fusion solution for warehouse management. So again, this is just a, a representative sample of the, the ISV community that is rushing to do business with, with Acumatica. Acumatica customers. Again, like this is like everybody you know out there, we have customers. So why is Kent showing you this slide? Well, yeah, it's certainly representative of our customers, but coming out of our, our all hands meeting today, um, we had so many people join Acumatica in the third quarter that we can't even fit all of the logos of the companies that joined Acumatica in the third quarter on a slide, no matter how small we make them. So there's a lot of momentum and a lot of energy going on at Acumatica right now. So just take it for what it's worth. But if you're thinking about coming to Acumatica, you're going to be joining a very fast moving, very exciting environment. Talk a little bit about the Acumatica product overview. So Acumatica has what we call our core products. So everybody, 
in every edition gets financial management, project accounting, and inventory management, and then has the option to bolt on our CRM solution or, or customer management. But then we take it one step further and we have vertical editions. So we have a field service edition, a manufacturing edition, a commerce edition, and a construction edition, and a distribution edition. This goes to the necessary function, functionality you might need to run your business. So I know Mike talked a little bit about our manufacturing edition. It comes with all of the discrete manufacturing. I want to be very clear about that. It's a discrete manufacturing product. So all your bill of materials, your configurator, your production management, everything you would think that would be in a high quality manufacturing edition is represented there. In our distribution edition, we do some of our advanced inventory skills, our advanced fulfillment skills, you know, budgeting and forecasting. Again, not every distributor needs this, so we break it out from a, from a distribution edition. Field service edition, everything that you would think it would have, route management, scheduling and dispatch, uh, real-time GPS, uh, service contracts, uh, a very strong, and it, it, it speaks to a really interesting, um, when people ask me all the time, what's the sweet spot of an Acumatica product? It, it becomes even more difficult to answer that question as time goes on because we have manufacturers that distribute a product and also service a product. So the question is, are they a manufacturer that does field service or are they a field service organization that does manufacturing? The, the product is incredibly deep and it can go across a broad spectrum of companies that it's difficult for us many times to define Are they what kind of customer are they? Our e-commerce edition um, and our construction edition. I do want to say something about the construction edition. This is newly announced in 2018 for Acumatica. If it's something that you're interested in, it is something you need to become authorized to sell. Every other previous edition, every other partner can sell. However, construction edition, we make you go through an extra step of, of kind of going through an interview process and being authorized to sell the construction edition. We like to say there is only one true cloud ERP platform designed for mid-sized customers, and it is Acumatica. I think that's a fair statement. Uh, we are a 10-year-old company. I think the time for us to, uh, to, to view that as a negative is over. I think Acumatica has arrived, I think the product has arrived, and I think we should be very comfortable and confident suggesting to our customers that if you're looking for a cloud-based solution, then Acumatica is where you should start your search. So some, clothing, some, clothing, some closing thoughts. Acumatica is different. We are 100% channel driven. We are a true technology company. 74% of our resources are focused on the product, and we have no plan B. Everything goes through the channel. We were 100% born in the cloud. We're not rewriting a 20 or 30-year-old code base, trying to smash three or four different portfolio products together and ultimately end up in the cloud. We started there, and everything we do is in the cloud. The flexible deployment options. It used to be if I was a partner and I talked to a customer and they had just signed up to run their Picket, Microsoft, Sage, SAP application in a local cloud, I can't sell it. I have to wait for them, that contract to expire. Not anymore. I can actually bring Acumatica into that current cloud environment, replace their existing system, and then when they're ready to move to the public cloud, we can move there or they can stay where they are. And then we talked about the compelling license model that's based on functionality and infrastructure. I do want to support what Mike said uh, about uh, Acumatica Partner Summit. It's coming up in Houston, Texas, January 27th through February 1st. Uh, having been to, to Summit and having been to uh, multiple partner conferences, um, I will tell you that the enthusiasm, uh, the energy, and the intensity that, that comes out of Summit in the hallways, uh, at dinners, at breakfasts, you know, in breakout sessions, it's just so exciting. It's something that for those of us that have been in the industry in more years than we care to admit, and, and I've been doing this since 1998, this type of energy is, is so refreshing. Uh, the, the amount of support that partners give each other uh, is it, it's very gratifying. 
So if you're thinking about becoming an Acumatica partner, I would say execute as quickly as you can, make sure you register for Summit, uh, and, I, and I really hope to see everybody there uh, or at our upcoming workshops. As I get ready to transition out of my part and, and turn it back over to Adrian and Noel, uh, I was asked to leave up uh, this register for Acumatica Summit slide uh, and a special offer that we have for those people that are uh, considering becoming Acumatica partners. Thanks again for joining us today. Thanks for listening to me uh, prattle on about Acumatica. Uh, looking forward to talking to you soon. Thank you so much, Kent. Great presentation. And I do have a couple polls and we have some questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch the polls here and announce the questions. So if you'd like to be contacted by an Acumatica Partner Recruitment Representative, please let us know by answering this poll. And let's see here. Kent, this question would be good for you. Uh, is the Acumatica Partner Portal using the Acumatica product? I don't know the answer to that question. I know the Acumatica product resides in the portal. But I'll find yeah. out the answer to that question. Perfect. Then maybe you could just reach out to Michelle, let her know. And then we have a question from B. Thank you, B, so much for your question. Um, she took an interested note that the field service edition is using Bing Maps. And uh, she's wondering if this is ever going to be expanded to Google or Waze because she's in South Africa and Bing isn't available there. I hate good questions. I'm going to have to find out the answer <laughs> to that as well. Perfect. And then I have a question for Mike. Uh, Mike, if you're still on the line, I hope so. Um, which industries have you found most success coming from Macola? Well, the manufacturing module, the manufacturing business we built in Macola, we've been able to transition very well. Um, pretty much the same uh, discrete make to order, make to stock, uh, with a few additional uh, lines of manufacturing that we couldn't do with Macola. So we were able to go after a couple others. The one that we're most excited about going after, though, is uh, field service. Field service was one um, in the Macola world where you had to write it your own, basically, uh, using some tools. And here it's a fantastic product. As a matter of fact, the one I said we just won uh, field service was an integral part of that win. And then uh, you mentioned, Mike, that you had a lot of support when you came on board uh, getting implementation assistance and getting uh, sales assistance. Are you at the point where you are pretty much self-sufficient and you're out oh, yeah. there? Yeah, we do our own demos, our own sales, our own pre-sales. We're implementing, we're writing our own conversion utility to convert our Macola customers to Acumatica, which will make some people very happy. Um, so yeah, we're completely 100% self-sufficient, uh, but we still hit Sarah up every once in a while when we need a cheerleader. And then I'm just curious, what are you doing for marketing? How are you finding opportunities? Where where do they come from? It sounds like you have a lot of opportunities that you're pursuing. And what advice would you have for Acumatica partners uh, and from a marketing standpoint? Well, you know, there's never enough leads, no matter who you are uh, or where you are. So you, you always want more leads. I, I think Sarah's done a good job of making sure we get our share. I, one of the things that um, you know, my experience in the McCola space, we, we were one of the big dogs, so we, when they used to give leads, we would get the big What we're seeing here is they're a little more tuned into where our expertise is. So if we have an expertise in a certain area like manufacturing, um, then we may get more consideration than if we didn't. So a little more uh, fair from that standpoint. Um, we're not doing anything really different than we did before, though. Our, I mean, we've got a good presence on the web and using the same services we used on McCullough. 
um, to, to do the same marketing that we were doing, uh, web and, and um, social media and those kinds of things. Uh, we now have the added benefit, though, of being able to market directly to our customer base, which we weren't able to do before. And uh, so we're going right after our own customer base with a, a message that, uh, that our customers should look at Acumatica. Hey, Adrian, this is Kent. I'd, I'd add to the marketing piece in that um, because we are 100% channel and, and we're very uh, supportive and protective of the investments that our partners make, uh, we do have a technology tool that allows our partners to embed within their website. So if a prospect happens to, to go into the algorithm website and find uh, his or her way to Acumatica, download a white paper, watch a video, and, and Acumatica happens to, to register or or find out that that person is a quote lead, uh, they will be, you know, marked as an algorithm, you know, generated resource. So that prospect will automatically kick back to the partner uh, that began their journey through their website. Uh, that that's something we believe strongly in. And then to Mike's point, if if a prospect does come to Acumatica independently, uh, the first thing that happens is it does go to the partner account manager in that geography, and that partner account manager is going to look at the expertise and commitment and certification level of those partners that are in that geography. And if it's a manufacturing lead, it would probably go to somebody that has demonstrated expertise and certification in manufacturing. If it's e-commerce, the same thing would hold true. So the lesson there is to make sure you're, you're tightly aligned with Acumatica marketing and make sure you have a good relationship with your partner account manager. Good points. Uh, we do have a poll up. I just want to remind the audience, I see 72% of you have voted. I'm going to leave that up for another second. I know we're two minutes after the hour, so thank you so much for hanging on. I'm going to flash up Kent's screen right after this poll, Kent, so if you could just make sure you have that Acumatica Summit slide up, because Noel wants to talk up to a couple points on that slide. That would be great. The slide is up. Perfect. All right, Noel, uh, if you'd like to... Go ahead and chime in about this. That would be great. Sure. Okay. And again, thank you everybody for uh, attending today's webinar. And as we mentioned, we have Summit coming up. So if you wouldn't mind, um, if you are interested in pursuing a partnership with us, we are offering, um, this is like a once in a lifetime offer right now, to uh, sign up to have a conversation with the other Noel, my colleague, uh, based in our headquarters in Seattle. Uh, to have a conversation about your interest in the partnership and we will submit your name and then we will do a drawing and if your name comes up then you will be attending summit as you can see it's a six ninety nine dollar uh, value uh, so it's a great cost savings if you get there free and as you can see there's a highlighted uh, link there where you can actually go ahead and schedule your conversation with Noel uh, using the Calendly app. So um, feel free, as I mentioned, if you're interested, um, this is a chance for you to get to Summit free on us. And I just so want to it. add that um, I will be sending out these slides, if that's okay with the Acumatica team, along with the recording of this webinar uh, and the contact information for Noel. Uh, so if you need to reference this after the webinar is over, then you'll have an email in your inbox with everything. And with that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close it out. You guys, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today and your participation. We really appreciate you spending your time with us. We know it's hard to come by, and we really hope that you, we see you on our next webinar. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care. Have a great day.